Hello everyone, welcome to your 4.3 video notes, carbon cycling. Carbon is one of the most important elements to life. If a molecule does not have carbon in it, it is not considered an organic molecule. Carbon exists in many forms. In atmospheric gases, it exists as carbon dioxide and methane. It can be dissolved in aquatic ecosystems, into the water, Organic carbon is found in living organisms as well, and carbon deposits in the lithosphere as minerals, carbonates, or fossil fuels. Carbon cycles throughout an ecosystem in what we call a carbon cycle. Click on this little box right here, click carbon cycle, and we can see the carbon dioxide move throughout an ecosystem. After today's video notes, you will be able to draw one of these carbon cycles. This is quite mesmerizing. <laughs> Moving on. <clears throat> Methanogenesis. Methanogenesis means the creation of methane. In 1776, Alessandro Volta collected bubbles of gas that were emerging from a reed bed and found that they were flammable. He could catch them on fire. He had discovered methane. It's produced widely in anaerobic environments as a waste product. Archaeans that produce methane are methanogenic. They make methane. Anaerobic environments include mud along shores and beds of lakes, swamps, mangroves, or areas where soil is waterlogged, guts of termites and ruminant animals like cows, and landfills where wastes contain organic material. Methanogenesis. Molecules of methane can persist for only 12 years in the atmosphere because oxygen and hydroxide oxidize the methane into carbon dioxide and water. Therefore, little methane exists in the atmosphere. Peat formation. Some environments are not able to drain well and the soil becomes waterlogged. Saprotrophs, needed to break down the organic matter, cannot live in that kind of environment. Environment can become very acidic. Large quantities of partially decomposed organic matter accumulates and compresses. This dark brown acidic material is called peat. <clears throat> Fossilized organic matter. There are large deposits of fossilized organic matter from past geological eras. Coal is formed when peat is buried under sediments. The first stage is peat, decay of vegetative material. The second stage is lignite. It's peat that has been compressed. The third stage is when you compress lignite. It creates bituminous coal. And if you compress that further, you have anthracite coal. It's also considered by some to be a type of metamorphic rock. It started out as vegetative material and over time gets compressed into what some consider a rock. Oil and natural gases are formed in the mud at the bottom of seas and lakes, typically anaerobic, so decomposition is usually incomplete. As more mud or sediments are deposited, the matter is compressed and heated. Chemical changes occur producing liquid carbon compounds or gases. Crude oil and natural gas are a product of this. In Pennsylvania, large coal seams are found as there was a cycle of sea level rises and falls. Coastal swamps formed, were destroyed, and buried. Each cycle left a seam of coal. Methane forms the lowest part of natural gas deposits and are found where porous rock can hold the gases. A rock such as shale, for example. Combustion. Organic matter can be heated and, in the presence of oxygen, will light and burn. This oxidation reduction is called combustion. Products from this include carbon dioxide and water. Combustion can be naturally occurring or caused by humans. Trees and other organisms can be adapted to this and regenerate rapidly after a fire. For example, sequoia trees, their cones need to be exposed to fire so they open and release their seeds to start the next generation. Coal, oil, and natural gas can be burned, as we all know. Limestone. Some animals have hard body parts composed of calcium carbonate, such as mollusk shells or hard corals, coral reefs, 
When they die, the calcium carbonate will, can dissolve away in acidic conditions. In neutral or alkaline conditions, this calcium carbonate form limestone. Next is drawing the carbon cycle, which you have all been waiting for. Your first step is to draw the four carbon sinks. But these are methods of storing carbon in ecosystems. You have carbon dioxide in the air and water, just as a gas. You have carbon compounds in producers carbon compounds in consumers, and carbon compounds in saprotrophic bacteria and fungi. Next, you want to draw the arrows to show the fluxes. Fluxes are the transfers of carbon from one sink to another. <clears throat> the thickness of your arrows will indicate the size of the flux. Start with your thinnest arrows, producers, to consumers, consumers to fungi, and consumers to air. Next, you want to draw slightly thicker arrows for producers to fungi, fungi to air, and producers to air. Finally, you want a really big arrow from carbon dioxide in the air and water to carbon compounds in producers. Add a dotted line from carbon compounds in producers to carbon dioxide in air and water. And finally, we add our labels. You have a label for, let's start with photosynthesis. So producers photosynthesize and take the carbon dioxide found in the air and water and put it into their bodies as carbon-containing organic compounds. And then us consumers feed on those plants. We eat them and gain their carbon compounds in our bodies. We die, so do the plants, and we give air carbon compounds to saprotrophic bacteria and fungi. They respire just like we do and release their carbon compounds into the air as carbon dioxide. Also, in combustion and forest fires, from plants can produce carbon dioxide into the atmosphere as well. All right. So draw the four carbon sinks. Draw your arrows from each carbon sink to the other. They're light arrows. Draw your medium-sized arrows. Draw your big arrow from carbon dioxide in water to producers. Draw the carbon compounds from producers going to the air. And finally, label each one. All right, that was 4.3 carbon cycling. That is it for today's video notes. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.